Hello, today we're going to talk about pruning an old red twig dogwood. And the reason we're going to do that is to rejuvenate it so that it will send up new branches which will have that nice red color that we like to see in that particular shrub. There's also a yellow one just like it and we particularly like it during the winter months because it gives you some real contrast. Now, when they get older, they develop this mature bark and they don't have much interest in the landscape. Now, they do have some flowers, aren't that significant, but um, we grow them specifically for their bark color or their, their stem color. Now, the dogwoods will respond to a fairly aggressive pruning and we call this rejuvenation. And whenever, if you've noticed, whenever you cut a plant, there's a response. Like, as I've showed you in my pruning videos of apples and pears, there's always a growth response as you prune them. The same thing is true for the dogwoods. If you remove the older, larger branches, that will encourage the plant to send up younger ones that have the color that we prefer. Now, the proper time to prune these shrubs is late winter. And in our area, that would be February through March. The key thing is you want to get the pruning done before they break bud in the spring, and that will vary depending on where you are in the country. And uh, in general, when we're talking about flowering shrubs, if you're interested in flowering shrubs and you want the flowers, anything that flowers up till about the beginning of June, we do that pruning after they flower. Anything else can be pruned during the winter months before growth starts. Now, you can prune a spring flowering shrub um, early in the spring, but you will sacrifice some flowers. Just remember that. Now, <clears throat> for the best results, we use a process called rejuvenation, and rejuvenation, which I've already explained, encourages that plant to produce new growth as we take off old, unpreferred growth. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take off the spreading branches that are touching the ground, and in the process also, I have some tree seedlings that are growing in among there that are going to have to be taken out. So I want everything that's low and touching the ground out. And one of the reasons for that is there are some diseases uh, leaf blight is one of them that can be picked up from litter in the soil and we don't want the branches right down there in contact with uh, areas where they can pick up a disease. next thing we want to be sure to do is remove all dead wood or any wood that looks diseased, no matter where it is. And we try to cut those right down to the ground. Now, when you have very old canes in there, you can prune those off as far down to the ground as you can. Hopefully you could get it right down to the ground. But you can prune down to about 18 to 24 inches if, it's, if there are no young stems at all. And you'll get stems coming off of those large pruning cuts, of those branches where you've made the large pruning cuts. But I prefer to try to cut them right down to the ground. The more larger stems that you can remove, the more you're going to get younger stems with a good color to come up. Now, one of the things you can do is if you have larger stems that have side branches really low to the ground, you can prune back to those side branches and that would be okay. You're still going to get that response. Also, if there are spindly stems, very weak stems growing in there, uh, you want to thin those out too. Just remove them totally. There is something that you also need to consider that if you have your shrub in full sunlight, then you're going to get the nicest stems with the bright red color. If they're shaded, it may not be as intense. And as you can see over here to the right, there's a Fraser fir and there's a white pine. And they are with, they're very closely, so, uh, closely associated with this shrub. So that means that uh, it may not come back as vigorously and the color may not be as vibrant. Now, when I'm cutting down some of these larger stems, I'm also trying to reduce the height a little bit. That's something you'll have to decide how high you want that shrub to get. But uh, I'm interested in the color, so however much I have to cut it back in order to encourage that growth, that will have the stems with color, then that's what I'm going to do. Now, after you've completed this process, one of the things you should do is 
make sure that the plant is well watered as it's trying to grow back, especially if you get into a dry part of the year. The, the plant may benefit from some fertilizer. You can use either a chemical fertilizer like a Balance 12-12-12, or you can just top dress the soil with some um, rotted or composted manure or your home compost, and that will help it to get off to a good start also. I've been at this for about four hours and you can see quite a bit of the plant has been cleared out. Over here is some of the stuff that I removed, but there's some that's already been taken over to the burn pile. And there's still some branches that are quite large and high yet, but I didn't want to take out everything this year, uh, but I took out more than enough to get this plant to send up a new growth. Uh, if you look closely, there's still some branches in here that are crossing other branches. But again, I'm uh, limiting how much I take out overall so that uh, the plant has a, plant's, a chance to grow back. And uh, it's going to be breaking dormancy any day now. But I think I'm pretty much finished with this plant. So in a few months, I will show you the results of what has happened and then you decide uh, how much you want to prune your plant and hopefully things will grow back and grow back well. I don't expect this one to be as vigorous as it should be because it is in shade. And uh, one of the ways I can deal with that is take softwood cuttings during the summer. Maybe I'll do a video on that later too. Start some whole new plants and put them in a different location. These are plants that like it where it's wet. So uh, they'll do quite well where you have a, a soil that tends to be a little soggy. So I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.